Yo, what's going on guys, aka Teacher here. Uh, today I'm going to be watching Kanata's second place in the Solo Cash Cup. He had six kills in this game, and I think this game is a really good example of how to play to your game plan and to your strategy. Uh, Kanata has a set strategy for every portion of the game, and he does a really, really good job of executing on that strategy throughout the game. Uh, so I just want to watch that with you guys and kind of point out what exactly Kanata is doing and why. Spawn. It looks like Kanata is going to be landing at Greasy Grove. I've watched him quite a few times and he generally likes to land at the gas station area for solos. But it looks like this time he's contested at gas station. So he takes a little house on top of the mushroom and he actually gets two chest spawns up there. And he knows that uh, there's only one or two potential chest spawns down here at gas station. So more than likely he should out loot nebs he also gets some early shield which allow him to get pretty aggressive here in key he actually does take a big shotgun shot from nebs so the way that he actually ends up playing this out is interesting he baits the edit waiting for nebs to peek just by keeping his shotgun out and cross herring where nebs could potentially edit from and then he blocks off this top peak that nebs is going for and then this forces nebs to fall down as he's getting third party through the window Blocks off his right angle so Nebs can't take an easy jump shot and hit Kanata over the ramp. And then he just takes this very simple jump peek because uh, he knows that he's cracked Nebs' shield and he should be one shot from his shotgun and he just makes sure that he hits the shot. Very, very good fighting skill shown from Kanata there. Um, and a lot of confidence as well. I would say that just to be able to stand there on that ramp and to have the patience and the confidence to know that if he just waits and allows his opponent to make a mistake that he'll likely pick up the kill. Definitely the telltale sign of a very experienced player, which Kanata certainly is. So we can fast forward through this. It looks like Ned skipped out on a couple of barrels. Not that that would have changed the course of the fight too much. Kanata's just going to be running around here. He's going to come out to the gloves here, grab his gloves, and he's going to move back into Greasy to finish off his loot path. So pretty simple stuff here, but it looks like as he finishes up with his loot path, we'll see him kind of start to branch out and uh, go look for Surge. Obviously, the mushrooms all around Greasy make this an extremely good POI just in terms of, uh, you know, looting. You get to keep a lot of your shields because even if you're trading back and forth for Surge, I'll spawn like Kanata's doing here. You don't have to break into the shields that are in your inventory. There's just a bunch of heals that are available on the map kind of just laying around. So Kanata and Aegis are trading Surge there. Um, so this is a very common spot that Kanata likes to come to. He knows that uh, there's quite a few split drops in this area, and this hill here gives him slight elevation to be able to see out into a wide area. It just so happens that when he timed this rotation, uh, he does get a couple of tags here on Jamper, but Nut is right next to him, and he ends up taking uh, a very, very risky mid-game fight here. But Kanata is one of the best if not the best defensive box fighter in the game and so we'll see kind of how he shows that skill here so he opens up a right hand peek at it but nut is just sitting standing here waiting for it uh he trades big damage back so kanada's on the defensive now just trying to make sure that nut can't phase in through his wall nut gets cracked by the third party which is going to force him to back off so kanada's just going to sit here and heal he knows he's safe he doesn't need to do extra any extra expansion and then we're just going to leave, right? Because we've already broken into our shield. We got some surge for the rest of the game. Um, we probably just don't want to fight this out. Now, Kanata is going to go back into his spawn because he came out here so early and he has zone. That's what the benefit of pulling these first zones, right? Is we have a lot more time to hang out uh, in and around our drop spot. Gets tagged up from an AUG there. But again, that's all right because we have a lot of the natural heals just hanging out around the map that we can utilize. So he gets um, some small fry and a slurpfish here. That's going to be huge for him to replenish his HP. And then we're just going to go bounce around on a couple more mushrooms, pick up the rest of our ammo, max out the rest of our materials. So here, second zone is already pulled. Uh, it pulls to the opposite side here. So it actually, this is a pull back here on second zone. So not a horrible rotate for Kanata. And it's pretty free through this center here, as you can see. So 
He's just going to pretty much white line it into zone. And again, every time he gets tagged, like he's doing such a good job of maybe going back a couple paces and just healing up. You know, pulling that first zone is the biggest thing that kind of allows him to do this uh, and get out onto his rotate early. Uh, also being in a nice little POI there that has a lot of free heals so that he doesn't have to do too much extra looting. So he basically just gets to come in for free down here on the dead side of zone. And he doesn't want to push it. He sees that there's a couple players around him, so he doesn't want to push it too much. So he pauses and staggers for a second. Then he looks for another rotation lane. And he ends up deciding to come down into valley, sits in a bush for a second to scout out where he's going to move next. And he's, as you can see, Kanata's, you know, using utilizing the time on the clock to slowly make his way to center zone, utilizing the natural cover around the map to kind of hide, utilizing bushes, utilizing line of sights to get really easy and free rotates so that he's set up to make moves like this to get center third. And uh, something you guys, most of you guys should know already by this point, but once you get to center third zone, it's a guaranteed four zone pull, and then you just kind of have to pray for the half and half pull. But automatically pulling four zone is going to save us a lot of materials, a lot of shields, um, because we're we're guaranteed that four zone pull, uh, so it is worth if it's free to go ahead and get center third. Gonna save us a lot of materials and shield later on in the game. But the only in these stack lobbies, you have to do a really really good job on your on collecting your surge and on your rotation timings in order to put yourself in the proper positions to be able to get center third zone. Waiting for the zone to finish pulling in. And as you can see, Kanata pulls pretty close. He's not fully on the edge of 4 zone, but he's in a really good spot to potentially pull 50-50 zone or to have a, a decently easy rotate uh, into 50-50 zone. We'll see what happens on this next zone pull. Alright, so Kanata does end up getting pretty much a maximum zone pull here. Uh, so this is this will be really nice. So as we can see, he's going early here. He's got about 20 seconds left before the clock starts. He you waste a little bit of materials here to try to get closer to zone, and then we start to get lobby focus, so we're just going to stagger for a second. And I have a feeling that he's gonna he's he's broken into way too many of his heals at this point, so I have a feeling he's gonna break out that glove and he's just gonna swing the rest of the way into zone. So he's pausing, he's waiting for everyone else to start moving here, right, before he starts going so that he's not the only uh, target for those people that are boxed up inside his zone already. So I want to point out to you guys real quick exactly where Kanata is positioning himself on this half and half zone rotate. It does look like we're about four to five layers off of low ground in a nice comfortable mid high to mid ground layer. This gives him fantastic sidelines to be able to plan out his next rotate. As well as to look for surge here, because he's only 65 above. Uh, he's gonna need some more surge for those for when 30 surge pops, because this is a set lobby, and generally speaking, those 30 surges are gonna be popping. Very good discipline from Kanata not to open up and go for the kill here, right? Like we're at. Uh, a total of 100 builds, and we still have our minis as well as eight eight charges on our glove. So there's not too much here that we need to do in terms of looking for a refresh. So he's just going to stay closed. He's going to let other people get in position. We know that we're good on our surge because we got those tags early while everyone else was rotating, and we can just sit in our box safely while we next wait for the next zone to pop, and we wait for it to start pulling. So here, Kanata's about halfway. Uh, he's not all the way backside, but he's not all the way frontside either, right? So... He's looking for, he goes up to go ahead and plan out his rotation, see where the congestion is, and see where the free paths are. And then with this glove inventory, in his inventory, something, I like this a lot. So Kanata moves here to go ahead and get elevated so that he has a better position to grapple from. 
And he's going to come out of the top here to be nice and high. Unfortunately, he does get tagged. Because he did not look to see if anybody was opened up and waiting for him to rotate. And now we're starting to fall, fall below Surge. So let's see how Kanata responds to this. So he has moved a little bit and he staggered a little bit more. Now we're going to hit the rotations with the glove. And from here, Kanata sees that height is free, so he's just going to go ahead and crank up and take height. He gets grappled on, so very interesting. A little uh, lapse in judgment here, or lapse in awareness from Kanata there. So this forces him into a really a really funky position. Now he's up really high on second height with not a lot of builds to work with, right? So we are going to go ahead and we're going to grapple to front side and we're going to start immediately looking back uh, to try to pick up, uh, to try to get some damage on someone, try to pick up a refresh. Playing really, really safe here, just really not opening to much of anything. He takes a note of Blue Bear on the side of him there. Opens up only one side of the cone so that he can try to get some more surge. Very... Very safe out of Kanata. Gets a wall there and just gets a free kill. So that's going to be a nice little refresh for him. But that happens because he notices as he's rotating the front side that he's that everything is going up a hill. So he can position himself a little bit higher, which is going to force people because of that hill to work their way up to him. Um, and then he should be able to just do something really simple like open out a wall and claim centerpiece and be able to get something that's really, really free. So he doesn't get a whole lot of materials out of that when he got the refresh. I think he was on 17, and now we're back up to 25. So this puts us in a position where we're going to have to continue to refresh. So layer selection is very important here out of Kanata, right? Like, he goes to front side. He sees that he can recycle this building. So he's going to start a little bit of a tarp. He gets cut off here, so he's got to respond to that. He's just going to wait for them to go slightly more front side, and then he's going to continue on with his low ground path. He really, really wants to hold low ground here because it's very, very good position to be able to pick up refreshes from place outside of this broken wall so you can reform for mass very very good and now he's just slowly working his way into zone trying to look for a refresh here because he knows he's kind of got to pick it up here right like he can't even if he moves he's got just enough builds for one other box and then he's not going to be able to move so and he also tanks his own here uh, for the materials, very important. They were needed, and he loses about uh, 40 HP, but that's a trade that we'll take because if we don't get those materials, we just aren't able to box front side. As Kanata is holding low ground here, he's also just doing a really good job of holding front side as well. This allows him to use his very few materials uh, and play very safely while he's looking for his refresh. He's also using a 2 by one Very, very good uh, job of utilizing the 2 by one here to take create safe angles and peaks with which to take minimal damage from. So unfortunately, he did get pumped there, so it's going to put us down to about 90 of total effective HP. Again, we have just enough builds for like one or two more boxes. He sees the loot out to the right, but he just knows that it's not safe. He doesn't have enough builds to go get it. So we're just going to play from our territory. We know that we're safe here inside the zone, so like let's just keep milking that placement. Picks up the big refresh here on Clement. Again, just playing super duper safe. Playing from his own territory. Looking around, the zone's so small at this point that, you know, people are just going to be running all around you. They're going to be all over your walls. So we can just play from our territory, play safe. He waits until he clears everybody low ground to go get this loot. This is the type of awareness that you guys need to have in terms of uh, when, you're, you know, when you're looking for loot, looking for refreshes. Sometimes that loot just isn't free and you're just gonna have to clear out low ground like Kanata did here in order to be able to get game winning materials. Picks up now very good awareness to recognize that Kenzo was backside. Now this is just a classic one v one low ground versus high ground. Obviously you wanna be in the high ground position here as it is more advantageous, but Kanata has the materials to win this game. Quix is just doing a really, really good job of holding the high ground here. Nice tag out of Kanata there. This peanut butter peak is very, very interesting. Obviously, it breaks the build above, and Quix is just able to get the free chip before.
Kanata, and that ends up the game. So second place from Kanata there, very, very skillful defensive box fighter, um, and he plays very, very safe. He's a very good player to learn from in terms of uh, not greeting, uh, which I think a lot of players tend, tend to struggle with at all levels. Um, but yeah, great game out of Kanata. He obviously finished first place in the most recent solo cash cup uh, in large part due to this game. So I just wanted to bring you guys this footage and hopefully you learned something today. See you guys in the next video.